Okay, so we're going to discuss plant diversity one and two, the plant kingdom. Just as a quick review, what are some of the key characteristics if we think in plant kingdom? Say it again. Right. Dependent embryos. When we're talking about plants, we know that they are going to be autotrophic by nutrition, yes? All plants produce their own food, correct? And so the earlier plants, though, structurally were different from the more advanced plants. So as we look at the plant kingdom, we want to organize them from the earlier plants to the more advanced plants. So we have the seedless Non-vascular is going to be the first category. Seedless non-vascular plants. And we'll talk about the three phylum, three division that belongs to this group. Second, thank you. seedless vascular. Okay? And we have two phyla two divisions I will talk about in this group. However, there are some name changes based on the previous phylum name and the modern phylum name. I will differentiate that. And I remember in lab I told you we'll focus on the one in the book, but we'll talk about those phylum names and make sure we're on the same page with what we want to know. And then the final category are the seed vascular plants. Okay. So we got seedless non-vascular, seedless vascular, and seed vascular plants. The three phyla for the seedless vascular plants are bryophyta, hepatophyta, and anthocerophyta. Okay? Which one of these three is used as the representative of the phyla? Bryophyta. Why? It's the largest. It's the most number of species in the bryophyta, and therefore that's the representative of this particular group, the seedless non-vascular. So they're seedless and non-vascular. So in terms of means of reproduction, what are these plants using? If they're seedless, what are we using? Spores. Spores. So they reproduce by spores. That's a key point, OK? When you think of plants, you think of seeds only, and that's the most advanced plants. The earlier plants are using spores. They reproduce using spores. And if they're non-vascular, what does that mean? No transportation vessels, right, to transport materials throughout the plants. Therefore, they're utilizing what as a source of transportation? Well, they're not really on land yet because the fact that they're non-vascular, they're tied to water, actually, for, for means of transportation. So they live closely associated with the water. They are on land but next to the water because they're still locked to the water in terms of transportation. Okay, so these are all terrestrial plants, but the earlier plants, the seedless non-vascular, are still linked to water, tied to water, because again, there are no vascular tissue to, to en enable them to be completely dependent on living on land. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, the final thing we want to talk about is when they alternate generation. Each plant group has, as we know, an alternation of generation as a key component to the plant kingdom. And in terms of alternation of generation, we're talking about alternating between what generation and what generation? Gametophyte, sporophyte, right? Gametophyte, sporophyte. This is very important. Because all plants alternate between the gametophyte and sporophyte. And so, if we're talking 
the mosses, the bryophytes, as the representative of the seedless, non-vascular plants, which generation is dominant? The gametophyte. And so we'll utilize that. We'll put that generation in green. Emphasizing that. In the first group, this is important, in the first group, the seedless non-vascular plants, the dominant generation is the gametophyte. And the sporophyte is therefore dependent on the gametophyte, grows attached to the gametophyte, and produces spores that then recycles through the alternation from one generation to the next. So it goes... The sporophyte produces spores, falls to the ground, germinates, grows into the gametophyte. The gametes fuse together, creates the sporophyte, and the cycle alternates. Any questions on the seedless non-vascular? And so in the lab, we focus on the moss life cycle as the representative of this group, and the male reproductive structures are called the male structures in plants. Antheridia. And the female structures are archegonia. So again, once we talk in plant kingdom and reproductive structures, the male structures are housed in the antheridia. The female structures, the archegonia, develops the sperm, develops the egg. We have fertilization that takes place, and the cycle continues from sporophyte to gametophyte. Gametophyte means gamete producing. Sporophyte means spore producing. 